Introducing the Waltzer, a wide gap shell base fit for a trio that's easy to build with inner and outer peaks and three walls to loot and TC. This base is sure to make your next wipe the ride you'll never forget. Jumping straight into the tour, first we're going to look at the upkeep of the externals. There are three in total, will require the same amount of materials, and of course, all three are disconnectable. There are also three gatehouses leading into the compound, with peaks looking back in. The half-height floors make it more difficult for raiders to shoot you. There's also an airlock to prevent anyone from going deep. These gatehouses are extremely cheap to put up, and still offer two turrets protecting the compound. There are also three bedrooms, allowing you to respawn quickly and get back in the action. The compound itself is extremely easy to seal, as you only need 12 external walls. Enter the shell through one of three airlocked entrances. In here you'll find a range of different breach peaks which also acts as a china wall, making it easy to defend your base in an online. There are also three separate chutes leading straight up and down from the shooting floor, making for excellent mobility. This spot here enables you to sit and camp any holes made in the side of your base. Use the ladder hatch for a quick route down to the shell. The chute also doubles up as a breach peak. As you can see, you are able to run freely around the whole shell, which is segregated by double doors should raiders try to gain control of it. It's also protected by up to six turrets, and has lots of space for boxes and other deployables. Enter the main part of the base through the armoured door. Jump up the chute to access the second floor. To access the main core and TC, drop down here. In the starter core, you'll find enough space for bags, boxes and furnaces to get your work going. And here you can see the upkeep of the main TC, which fits almost a day and a half of materials. Jump back up to the second floor and use the chute to access the floors above. you notice in this design there is no open core, just regular loot rooms, as I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. If you want an open core, build the Royal Razor. On the fourth floor we have the bedrooms. There's enough space for four beds up here, so if you've got an extra teammate, you can bag them in. Exit onto the shooting floor through the airlock. And now you get to see this base's main feature, the shooting floor. As you can see, the wide gap offers all the excellent peaks that you normally get. But with the inclusion of the low walls and half walls, it also acts as a third wall and inner peaks into the shell. If you haven't seen this style of building before, don't be put off. It's very easy to build. There are also three extra bedrooms and jump ups onto the roof. And unlike other YouTubers' designs, you can actually run around the whole shooting floor. Here you can see the drop down peaks again, and if you jump up through the single door, you'll pick up onto the roof. Perfect for defending those top downs. You can also access the roof through the main chute, which has a peek into the shooting floor and the roof. The airlock exit prevents anyone from going deep. The roof itself benefits from two vending machine bunkers, but these can be swapped out for a helicopter garage as I'll show in the tutorial. But if you feel like you need more hidden loot storage, join my Discord, where you find a video which shows you how to bunker the starter, and also to add three more hidden loot rooms. I didn't add it to this video, as I wanted to make it as simple as possible, whilst not letting raiders know where the secret loot rooms are. Next you can see the build cost and the upkeep of the base. Whilst the stone cost is quite high, the metal cost is quite low, which is great for a trio. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like to subscribe and ring that bell to keep up to date with all my latest videos. This video is sponsored by HAL. HAL has just released slots, live games, and most importantly, crypto withdrawals. You can now deposit Rust skins, gamble on any slot you wish, and withdraw your winnings into crypto. They've also added chat rain to claim free money every 30 minutes without having to bet your own, and a free Rust case to win up to $2,000 daily. For a limited time, you can receive a 48% bonus when depositing with crypto or gift cards. Use my code CROW for a free 50 cents. Check it out in the description, 18s and above only. Commence the build by placing down a triangle footprint and a square either side, and surround with walls. Then put a double door on the triangle. After sealing the roof, put the TC in this square, and of course remember to lock it, otherwise there's no point in having externals. Now use the TC room for your loot, and the right hand loot room for your bags and workbench and furnaces. To build a shelf in the TC room, Place a twig foundation, a half wall and a triangle outside the base. When you're ready to expand, place another square foundation here 
and surround with walls up to the second floor. Use a furnace for your jump up. Seal in the top, add another door and then add an airlock. Next, you can build a shelf in the other loop room. Obviously, you'll need to move your bags, workbench, and furnaces to the new jump up. Now, build a twig roof on this foundation as a temporary entrance. And next, complete the second floor. To build shelves in the loop rooms. Place a twig half wall and then build the shelf. Delete the half wall and replace it with the full wall. And then bridge it over to the other loop room with the twig triangle. So far, the base should look like this. And next we're going to add a honeycomb to the back of each square. Don't worry about sealing the top yet. We'll do that in a minute. Next, add more honeycomb in between the two loot rooms. Add a stone wall in the middle to prevent splash. And where the triangle roof is, we're going to build the chute. Place another foundation, a door, and a wall. This definitely should be an armoured door as soon as you've got one. Then build a jump up. Not forgetting the garage door. On the next floor up, extend the jump up to the second floor. and then the third floor. Don't seal the top of the jump up in as we're going to extend it to the fourth floor eventually. And add ceilings to the top of each part of the honeycomb. The soft side of this wall should be facing in. When you upgrade it to metal later, you can rotate it again. For these sections of the honeycomb, make sure the ceiling is attached to the outside wall. This prevents the triangle splash bug. More information in the description. Finally, I'm going to show you which parts to upgrade to HQM. As there's no bunker on a starter, the ceiling and the entire jump up needs to be armoured. At this point your base should look like this. Now we're going to build the externals. These externals should be built out from the triangle honeycomb at the back of each square. To save time, I'm going to be using three-way symmetry for this. Build up by a triangle, two squares, and another triangle. Move the two squares in the first triangle, then build back towards the base with three more triangles, raising the last one. It's okay if the terrain won't let you raise the last one, you can place it lowered. Then remove the twig triangles and place a square. From the square, build three more triangles, upgrading the middle one and the right one to metal. This will form the gatehouse. Next, build up by two twig triangles, two squares, and then a metal triangle and a stone one. And then build two half walls here, which is extremely important for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Then seal in the rest of the external housing. Also note that it's worth putting another door on the external if you plan to put batteries in these. There are only two spaces of batteries in the actual base, 
so one external will have to have a battery in. Next, connect the external to the gatehouse with a single door frame, two triangle floor frames, and two squares. In the event that your main TC gets destroyed and you need to replace it, you'll need to disconnect all three externals using this mechanism. Once you've replaced it, replace the frame. Next, complete the gatehouse with windows all around. Make sure the single doors are facing the correct way to enable the airlock. The type pods can be built later if you're a bit strapped for resources. Know the angle of the position of the turrets. This is important for the best coverage. When completed, the external and gatehouse should look like this. You'll need to repeat this again on all three sides of the base. Before you can seal in the compound, position yourself in between each of the externals and build out like so for the compound bedrooms. With one square, two triangles, a square to the left, another triangle, another square, and then two more triangles. The only parts you need to upgrade are these two triangles and the first two. If you're at all confused, this is what it looks like from above. To connect all these parts together, place a frame, and then a half wall on this triangle, and then a frame in the middle, and then a window on the bedroom, and then surround it with walls and a garage door garage door must face out to be able to fit the locker and the bedroom in here. If you place the bed correctly then you won't be able to see it through the garage door. After that this section should look like this and you'll need to repeat it again on the other three sides of the base. When you're happy with that, you can go ahead and remove these twig parts. Now we're going to seal the compound. Place the ones next to the bedrooms first, and we need to make sure that they're placed just before that corner. Use the back of the bedroom to line it up straight, then angle it in on the left slightly. Now do the same for the other side. If you place those correctly, you should have no problem sealing the rest of it in. When completed all the way around, it should look like this. Next, you need to place barricades on top of the gatehouses. To do this, place twig on either side. Do the same for all three gatehouses. Ignore this one, just having symmetry problems. And do the same for the bedrooms, with just one barricade. Next we're going to build the windmill towers. You'll notice that in the tour, these are actually built on the bedrooms as it looks better. But for cheaper upkeep, you could build them on top of the gatehouses instead. Note that the two triangles should be upgraded to metal to prevent soft siding. For your large furnaces, make sure that they're placed right up against the walls to prevent any mobility problems.
Next, we're going to build the word gap shell. Press a triangle next to the raised one. Then a twig square and another triangle. Do the same for the opposite side. On the left hand side, we're going to build the entrance. So place a door and then a window, followed by two frames on top. All these parts have to be metal eventually, otherwise they'll fall down and arrayed. And place another single door and a wall on top. The opposite side is almost the same, we're just going to put two windows. Then put a wall frame here to put the wall on top. Now if you weren't able to put a raised foundation here, you'll have to put a half wall and a floor for your turret. The turret will sit on top of the triangle. The reason we use the raised foundation is that it's slightly cheaper. Now if you're on console, you'll actually have to build these roofs beforehand, as I'm doing now. But if you're on PC, you can place them later, as since the latest update, we're able to rotate roofs. Then on the lowered foundations, place a half wall on either side, and then windows on top, making sure the center one is upgraded to metal. Next go back inside and place a row of half walls on top and then seal in the ceiling. When this part is complete, it should look like this from the outside. Again, you'll need to repeat this part on the other three sides of the base. If you can't remember how to do it, just rewind the video. Again, if you're on PC, remember you can rotate these roofs so you can build this part easier. Next, we're going to build the chutes that are connected to the base. From console, remember to place your roof first. Then put another wall frame here, two wall frames on top, a floor, and then a full wall. You can put a turret on top of the floor if you like. Then build another half wall, and then put two windows on top. Next, go back inside and place two more full walls on top of the windows. And put double doors in the wall frames to prevent anyone from gaining control of the shell. When completed, this section should look like this. Again, you'll need to repeat this step on the other three sides of the base, as you can see here. Next, go up to the third floor of the base and build twig floors all around to help you complete the shell. First, we'll finish off the central part. Put metal frames all around the front, seal in the top with triangle floors, and put a half wall and a low wall behind. And this section is basically the same, just put metal frames, a triangle floor, then a half wall and a low wall again. When completed, this section should look like this. You'll need to repeat it again on the other two sides. For the chutes, place two windows on top of the full walls. Then a triangle frame with a ladder hatch facing you. Then a half wall and a low wall. And you can place two more frames here for stability. When you've done all three sides, remove all the twig. 
When this section is completed, the base should look like this. Next we're going to build the third floor, so first place walls all around. And then complete the ceiling, making sure the triangles are placed correctly. Then add walls to complete the honeycomb. In the double triangles, remember to put a stone dividing wall to prevent splash. At this point, the third floor should look like this. In these two squares, build a simple loot room. Next, put wall frames in every slot. And for that, jump up to the fourth floor where we're going to extend the chute. Put a half wall and a low wall here to act as a shooting floor peak. and a half wall and a window on this side. A triangle floor as a jump up, a frame, and a triangle frame above that. Now finally we can seal the shell with floors all around attached to the base. Note that the base will be quite vulnerable in its current state, as radios will be able to camp your inner peaks. We need to complete the next section as quickly as possible, so farm up. Next we're going to build the shooting floor and the roof. First extend the chutes with two windows on top, a triangle floor and a ceiling, and a single door as the peak up. And add two more wall frames here with the ceiling and two double doors. Again, this needs to be repeated on the other two sides. On these sections, place windows on the single triangles with the ceiling on top. Then in the middle, place a half wall in the center, upgrading it to metal. Then a window on either side, a window in the middle. Two half walls either side. Then attach floors to the metal half wall. Don't forget to put a turret under the floor as soon as possible. Then build a garage door on this side and a window here. Next place your triangle roofs here and seal in the top. This is what this section should look like when finished. Repeat it again on the other two sides of the base in exactly the same way. Now to complete the fourth floor bedrooms. Place walls all around. With a single door next to the chute. and seal in the top. You can actually skip forward and seal in the rest of the shooting floor if you prefer and do the inside of the fourth floor later. On the double triangle sections, put a full wall here and the same on this side. And inside here, you'll put your large battery behind the garage door. This will be concealed by the locker too, making it more difficult to find. 
I actually recommend making the roof of the base HQM in case of an MLRS strike. Next put double door frames all around and fill them with double doors. Put a single door here to act as another airlock. Next we're going to seal in the roof of the shooting floor. Place frames on this triangle to help support it. Then complete the roof with all the parts attached to the base. Next complete the roof exit with two full walls, a half wall above the window, ceilings and two single doors for an airlock. After that, place square roofs all the way around, attaching to the wide gap shell. Above the roof pickups, you can actually put another turret if you feel like you need it. Otherwise, just put two triangle roofs facing in. I think three turrets up at the bedrooms is more than enough. After that, the roof should look like this. Next, I'll show you how to add a helicopter garage. Put walls all around this part, with two single door frames here for vending machines, and a garage door on that side. Or if you don't feel like you need it, then you can replace them with vending machine bunkers, like so. Put a wall frame here first for the SAM site to sit on, and then a HCM wall here. Place a sound site on top of the wall frame. First place two twig triangles on top. And then carefully place your sound site, making sure it's centered. If it's not centered, then when you break the twig triangles, you will break the sound site, so be careful. After that, place your vending machines on this side of the armored wall. If you're on PC, you can rotate the roof to open them. But if you're on console, you'll have to place the roof from behind. Congratulations. If you managed to make it this far, that means you completed the base. I hope you have a great wipe in it. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. All the best. Cheers.